All right, got a blurb here for you. Greetings and things. Look at this, just showed up in my mailbox. I had uh, almost forgotten that it was on the way. So this is a fascinating combination of hardware. So we've got two different things here, really. This is the Potato Pie Lite version one from Pseudo Maker. And that's attached to the RetroWave OPL3 from Pseudo Maker. And yeah, these two together combine to make an ad lib OPL3 compatible device you can just plug into a computer, whatever's got USB, and use it as a dedicated ad lib sound card. How cool is that? And yeah, that is an original OPL3 chip on there. Manufactured 1995. So yeah, you got Yamaha FM synth goodness. A little volume knob right there. Audio output, 3.5 mil. And then uh, some other connectors on the Potato Pie light. This is such a cool idea. So yeah, someone from Pseudo Maker actually got in touch a while ago, actually. And uh, just said, hey, we've got this thing. It seems like it'd be cool for you to show an LGR or something. And I said, hey, sure, if you want to send it over, go ahead. And then I never heard back from them. <laughs> that was months ago. So, uh, you know, with things taking a good while to arrive from China and such these days, I guess it was just what it is. Anyway, they have a storefront, apparently, on Tindy. They've been going since March 16th, 2021, so pretty new at this, I guess, but uh, I really enjoy what they're doing so far. You have to buy this in two parts. I don't think they sell it together. In fact, I don't think they sell it at all right now because, yeah, I think everything is out of stock at the moment, so uh, my apologies for that. But yeah, there's the Potato Pie Lite, which is a Raspberry Pi 40-pin header compatible STM32L series dev board. Yeah, all right. And then there is the part that's most fascinating to me, the RetroWave OPL3 sound card add-on for it. So this on its own is $37.97. And the thing is, it's one of those 40-pin things that can plug into a Raspberry Pi Zero's hat. Yeah, the, the Potato Pie light that's on this and that they sell just makes it a lot more convenient and uh, it's an instant USB interface. That way you don't have to configure anything, do anything. You just plug this into a modern computer with USB and it should work just as it is. And yeah, it is at the moment supported in DOSBox X. Uh, I believe that is the only emulator that supports it. And it should be in just whatever the current version is as of the making of this video and beyond. It's just supported in there and <laughs> you can just play whatever you want in terms of DOS games or anything else that would have a OPL 2 or 3. I love this idea. Instead of having to rely on emulation for your ad lib twanginess. And I'm pretty particular about my twang. I, I want to make sure that an ad lib sounds like an ad lib or is close to it. I love the idea of having a hardware plug-in ad lib. You know, there's a lot of uh, modern ad lib clones and recreations and even OPL3 things. I've covered some of them before, but those are, you know, actual sound cards, plug into actual old PCs. And oh yeah, this is the OPL3 edition of this. Now they are planning apparently to have some other different things, <laughs> some different sound cards that'll just stack on top of this. So you could use this as the base and dink, 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 add different uh, sound chips to different emulators and whatnot. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember which other ones. I believe like the, the Sega Master System sound chip, they're gonna make like a module for that, or at least there's plans for it. So you'd be able to have the actual sound chip with a, a regular emulator, and then yeah, you just get more accurate sound. Uh, for me, it's, it's particularly important for OPL 2 and 3. So let's try it out. All right, so I just got my Windows 10 Threadripper build, and I'm just gonna plug it in to uh, my Mackie sound thingy over here for the audio output, and then USB just goes into standard USB port. All right, and so that shows up under the common LPT ports section as a USB serial device, and if we go into do 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 right here reported device description. You see the RetroWave USB adapter. That's it. It's ready to go. So really all we need is 
some compatible software, and I'm going to be using the currently latest version of DOSBox X. And if we go into the configuration tool, there is a sound blaster area. And really, I've <laughs> it's so simple. You just type this in, retrowave underscore OPL3, and then have this retrowave bus and port section to serial, and then COM3 in my case, because that's what it was in the Windows Device Manager. It might change to COM4 or something, but yeah, COM3 in this case, and uh, that's it. We are ready to go. Yeah. Testing out Duke 3D here, of course. And I've got normal emulated Sound Blaster for the PCM side of things going through DOSBox X. Good times. And then for the music, we can select either the Sound Blaster or AdLib. It really doesn't matter. I mean, it's going to be going through the same thing because they both use the same chip. So we'll just put it to Sound Blaster. Because it's going straight through the device over here, if I change the volume on the RetroWave USB thing itself. Yeah, that is acting completely independently from the emulator. And uh, if you actually look at the little device, you can see a little blinking lights. Look at that. Now, honestly, it sounds pretty decent in Duke 3D emulated anyway. So let me try one where I think the difference is more apparent. So we got Jill of the Jungle here. Uh, let me run, I have the just regular version of DOSBox. It does not support a little RetroWave OPL3. So this will be just emulated OPL. Now let's go over to the RetroWave card thing. I can hear a notable difference. Well, maybe not notable, but noticeable. It's there. It's just, I don't know, maybe it's more of an in-person thing. I don't know, it's coming across in the recording. Hmm. All right, I'm going back and looking through that footage and just listening, uh, obviously. It's gonna sound like crap. I wasn't actually doing a direct recording or anything. So let's go ahead and do that here uh, in a moment anyway. And I just wanna just briefly discuss what I was hearing that was different there, it's mainly just some of the percussion, some of the higher pitched noisy sounds and a little bit of the lower end is uh, it's slightly different. It's very, very subtle. Honestly, OPL 2 and 3 emulation has gotten really good uh, over the past 10 years or so. I remember before that, it was kind of crap here and there for sure. And uh, now it's really good. And there's other versions as well that you can mess with in terms of emulation, like nuked OPL. I really like the way that sounds, honestly. So yeah, you're not gonna hear a whole lot of really big differences between these. So yeah, don't expect night and day differences here, but it's it's a thing that I think is really awesome in terms of a device itself. I just love the idea of having this over USB and I'm excited about some of the future RetroWave devices because yeah, it'd be nice to have even more sound chips through the same interface. But yeah, uh, we're gonna close out this video here, this blurb with some demonstrations, just direct recordings of both DOSBox OPL3 and the RetroWave OPL3 and see if you can pick out any differences. It's pretty hard for me to pick out differences, honestly, but there are a few here and there just slightly. So yeah, thanks for watching this blurb on this awesome little device that I'm glad exists.